Hello, now here. Welcome back to Grim Dawn. We're playing on hardcore with our Drainus and Death Knight. And we've arrived in the Elite Broken Hills. So, for today, we're gonna head into the Steps of Torment, the next step in the journey. In between the episodes, I have run some bounties for my good friends at the Devil's Crossing. I only need 7,000 more experience or faction points to get to Revered. Before I did that, I was at 9,400. So I did the, uh, picked up two b bounties that took me to the uh, Cronley's hideout and I just ran it twice. Now, run it once, get up a new bounty, reset by going back to the main menu and going in and then clearing it out again. You get a surprising amount of reputation that way. Oh, 2,400 XP into runs uh, is not that bad. Of course, I do have the uh, the faction rich, so I get 50% more. Otherwise, it would have only been 1600 XP or reputation points. But it uh, it helps. Also, I realized that no, oh, having the Reni, uh, the uh, NPC, that of course you have the choice of confronting or not. Um, if you have him still alive, then he becomes a farmable boss in the Cronley's hideout. He's worth 112 XP or faction points for uh, murdering him, which no, it does add quite nicely if you run that area multiple times. So I think from now on, I'm actually just going to keep him alive all the time. Go, you get a key and you can farm him later on. That's much, much, much better than a little bit of XP once. Okay, so we have three heroic birdies. Four heroic birdies. Sure, why not? Come on. Amo still alive? Yes, you are. Raftel and the Corrupted. Hey, cool. And then we pick up all the loot. Taking decent chunks of, of damage from the uh, cloud on the floor. So for the Steps of Torment, we're taking a turn to the right. There is a shrine at the bottom. It's active, no, same as it was on normal. Ooh, light just just. So it's going to be net yet another devotion point. No, the first one of three that we need to get the Lion Constellation. Tenebris the Blood Drinker. Let's uh, cast your spirit out. Yeah, there we are. So killing the undead is good for Roper, Rover reputation. For them, I also have a faction writ, and the moment I make it to Homestead, I'm gonna pick up a writ there as well. I mean, currently I'm, I'm drowning in money. I had no, over 350,000 before I bought the writ. Writs are 88,000, so no, they cost a bit. But especially you know, once you have enough money that you don't really have any real purpose for it. Picking up Ritz to just advance your faction uh, gaming. I think it's pretty useful. Because it just gets you access to those end tier uh, augments for in your gear that much sooner. Which gives you more resist and it gives you a little bit more flexibility. Now once you hit ultimate of course you're going to lose 25 in all of your resist. Both the bottom, uh, the top and the bottom row, rather than only the top row. But no, especially using those uh, those augments to fix your chaos and ether resistance is very helpful. Uh, Balazar, eternal servant of Dreek. Where did you go? There did you go. Half hidden behind the wall, difficult to see. In the end it didn't really matter though. Okay. And onwards we go. Plenty of ghosts here and some ghostly champions. I might pick up a new shield here. Which would be wonderful. I like new shields. You're a little too far away. Oi. 
I thought I shot at you. You're supposed to be dead. But the, right now we're at that stage where we're just doing enough damage to murder most of the things without really getting any opposition. So every once in a while when an, an, an opponent actually bites back, it's like, wait, what just happened? Doesn't happen too often. I mean, I, I fought uh, Cronley twice. One time I kind of just steamrolled him. The other time he went down and in the end he actually did some damage back and I went down to like halfway of my life. And I was like, wait, what just happened? He didn't do that before. So well, be careful not to get lulled into a, a false sense of security slash immortality. Because immortal, we are not. Tanky, sure. But immortal, definitely not. And enemies always have a habit of just catching up with you in, in power level. Or just catching you unaware or having this... Unintended combo of, of powers that just stack in nasty ways. But yeah, uh, complacency and, and, and just getting overly confident, definitely your biggest your biggest foe. Now you're always your own biggest foe rather than anything the game can really throw at you. But though having a, a healthy dose of, of paranoia about enemies and just being a little wary, that will definitely come in handy to keep some of that overconfidence in check. Okay, so we're still pretty good in terms of energy management, so no, but I wasn't I gonna up some of the supports? I think I was. So let's start with this one. Put Two points into it next level put one point in here put another two uh, put another point in decomposition and then add another two here so no, we're boosting everything so now we are now right now we can affect an extra target with a slightly higher chance and we'll leech a bit more so dealing with larger groups of enemies just became more powerful hello there gargantuan I'll drain all the life out of you. There we go here. Only some, some small ghosties. Oh, there's the uh, the corpse. Lots of loot. Empowered Astro Mantle. I think we use the lower level version in normal. So what's this one do? Still the lightning orb, but now some bonuses to star packs on raging tempest. Decent ether resist. Bonuses to lightning and elemental damage and a bit of energy regen and some spirit. So it's alright, but not really great for this build. Okay. Let's keep putting points into spirit. I, I suspect that we have enough strength to last us for the remainder of the game. Because no, the uh, soldier line gives quite a bit and we still have some passives to put more points into that are going to boost our physique even further. And there's some gear that will provide it. So. I mean, my, my goal for the uh, for physique was to no, get 11 points per level, so eventually ending up at around 1100 points for level 100. So I can effectively equip all possible uh, gear I could want in terms of armor and shields and I think uh, we're pretty well on the way and the more points we put into spirits the more damage and energy regen we're gonna get so it's a very nice statistic to have all the ghosties are gone you sneaky bugger hiding in the corner well, actually, smart sneaky bugger. Been using line of sight against me. That's uh, oh, that's good positioning. Can't say anything really bad about it. It's, it's just good positioning. I mean, if I were an embassy in a game, I probably would try to do the same thing if I were aware of such a thing of 
No, what can and can a player not see? It's sneaky, but it's effective. And we have arrived at Misery, the heart of the party. Oh, on that party. They're always a little dusty. Okay, murder the priest first, then everything else will kind of follow as a side effect. Kiaman. Yes, there you are. Sturdy bugger. Big treasure chest. Uh, warlock. Hold noble. I haven't seen any of my uh, my shields drop. No, in in all fairness, there's only been one or two uh, ghostly champions. They don't always drop the uh, mons in frequency. They're called infrequent for a reason. Not guaranteed drops. Or maybe some of them dropped, but they were white or uh, yellow, so oh, useless. Because the power level of those is much, much lower. And then that's... Okay. What do we got here? Empowered Wild Colors Decapitator. That's a three-part shaman set. Let's see how much opposition we're going to get uh, at the shrine. There's a corpse. Only a little bit of loot. The, uh, the fight at the shrine here, it, it, it varies wildly. Sometimes you get an amazing fight out of it and you actually find yourself you know, backtracking multiple rooms just to deal with all the, uh, the savagery that pours out. So all those monsters are, are pretty damn powerful. And other times it's it's basically a snooze fest and you just instant murder everything that, that pops out. Okay, Ancient Heart and a Empowered Curse of Burbage. That's a crossbow if I remember correctly. Yes, plus five to Curse of Frailty and cast Curse of Burbage on crit. Reducing movement speed and chaos resistance of the target. There's a hint spoils here. And a bunch of green stuff. Let's do some fighting. Oh, loot. Okay, so we got the uh, grub watch in the back. Monstrosity in the front. And just some, some low level stuff around here. Hello. So, yeah. Three of those, four of those, those giants that could hurt. They definitely hurt. I mean, look at the impact. I can't do that. Right, let's, uh, let's see. Ah. So far, not so bad. And it is gone. I think if you've got a, a less tanky character, then this could definitely be a painful experience. So last time we completed the scales of Orkuma. So Lion it is. A little bit of health, a little bit of defensive ability. And we are once again over the 1100 point barrier with our life. Oh, blueprints. Relic. Plunderer's Talisman. That uh, requires Marauders. Yeah. And it grants 15% chance to use a volley, so that, that's a mythical. Oh yeah, that's the, the next tier. Sweet. So now we head over to the other side, and I see the way through is blocked over there. So we take the long route. And we get a hot date with Balgazar. I think it was Balgazar. No, start to Yes, the, the, the Grand Priest. Fire Mage. So. It's gonna be. It's gonna be fun. It's also one of those fights, it, it really depends on, on how things turn out. Sometimes you just wanna take out all the add ons first and then go after the boss. 
other times you just take out the boss and as a side effect you accidentally kill the add-ons. It, it really, really depends. But it's one of those fights that has the potential to, to wreck you. He, he can do a lot of damage. Go through the room, murder all the ghosts. Back in the day when you could not craft your own uh, ectoplasms, this was also one of my favorite places to just go for hunting down ghosts. Since the, the monsters here, they actually level adjust to you until relatively late in the game. Even though the, the upper levels they don't really scale too far. I think they, they stick in the level 30s. The, the, the lower levels, they actually scale along with you. So even if you're like level 55, you can still go down here and hunt for ghosts, which is uh, which was useful. But now, of course, you can craft ectoplasm, so it's much, much less of a, of a problem. Ooh. Heroic ghost. Of course, still no shields for me. Two hunted champions. Okay, I think at this point they're just doing it to taunt me. Not dropping shields, that is. It's like, ooh, he wants a shield. Let's not drop one. <laughs> and they're all laughing about it. Well, jokes are on them. Because they are not making it through the day, and I am. Well, I hope. I wish. I'll do my best to make it through. Yeah. Show yourself, Grand Priest. So let's just play this a little careful and just leech the, uh, the add-ons first. So oh, there's only one source of damage and that's the boss himself. And then we go in here. He's 71, I'm 64, so he's 7 levels of Buffy. Okay, let's just reflect the damage back at him. And he's already nearly dead. Yeah, that that's, that could have gone much more wrong. We are now hated by the undead. I think I did a good thing there. And I get additional hero spawns for the effort. I like it. And we got ourselves a skeleton key and a blueprint for the skeleton key. So we are now done downstairs here. We've got some, some time left. So I think it's going to be useful to run through the broken hills and grab the next waypoint. We have to kill Lutra, the abandoned, and I also managed to pick up a, uh, a bounty for uh, Rixnap Plague Feather, who is another harpy who is residing somewhere in the neighborhood. I mean, if I run into her, fine. If not, fine. But getting to the to the next waypoint and resolving the known quests is going to be the goal here. Ooh, there's a. Burning bull and a diseased bull. Cool. So that's three heroes in one place. Two bulls and a harpy. Nice. Thank you very much for your XP and faction status contributions. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, let's see. I think I'm wandering into the wrong area, aren't I? Yeah, I should go, should go up, not down. Or at least head towards the uh, top left-ish. I mean, before you cross the bridge, you do have to dip down a, a little bit that not ready. for Lutra. Well, that's that's kind of it. 
I mean, that would have been too far to the south. If I'm remembering correctly. Coming from the south here also works. And there we are. You will now rest in peace. Okay. Then we can quickly portal up and down to have a chat with her ghostly mother. Get a attribute point for my troubles. Hello. She's done, suffers no more. Thank you for the attribute point. And that is one more point of spirit. Okay, back to the portal. And then we can keep going west. And I, I suspect if I had done a, a full clear of most of the area, I might have run into the Harpy. But it could also be, of course, that the Harpy is further to the west. Just doing a little bit of extra work here. Clearing out some of the islands here. But so let's keep going. So on normal, there's a shrine here, high difficulties, and there's not. So no devotion points for me from here. And slowly things are changing form. So there's some avians here still. Maybe, maybe we'll find what we're looking for. I mean, I've, I've done quite a lot of bounties for Devil's Crossing, but for the rovers, I haven't really done all that many. Most of the time they want you to go after undead rather than after harpies or other things. Ah, we have uh, Elsa here. Alrighty, goodbye. Doesn't want to be found. Well, we can respect that. Loot. Okay, let's see. Next time I'm running into a, into a camp, I'm just gonna park myself there, like that, and just see if we're not doing anything. How tanky are we? Because I think there's quite some tankiness going on. I mean, we have uh, Spectral Wrath, of course, being murderous. We've got the... Uh, the, the flames of Ignifar, that, that also seems to be uh, triggering. There is the uh, Siphon Souls defensive trigger. Okay. They really don't seem to be all that interested in actually fighting me on, unless I'm an aggressor. Ooh. Okay. Two heroes. Three heroes. Okay. Four heroes. Yeah, okay. You know what? Let's, let's not do this thing of standing still. <laughs> or standing still and, and not doing anything. Because I actually tried and no, my, my health was... <laughs> my health bar was not happy for it. But no, fighting back a little, drawing them out. Most fights that are no really intense because there's a lot of enemies close together. If you draw them out, then you get the advantage. That, that really works rather nicely. Ooh, big treasure chest. Yes, please. But yeah, non-heroic mobs, they really don't stand a chance. There's just too many defensive layers going on. That have a bite. And that takes us to the... Smuggler's Pass waypoint. So that's always a very nice place to end things. Let's see. Yeah, still have to find Rexna, but well, as I said, don't really care too much about that. So next episode, we're gonna continue the journey for now. Though I've got a, a 
couple of bags of, of trash to MP. Ooh, we got a, a blueprint. Oh, skeleton key. Yeah, that, that's already have that. So, no, oh, didn't really find all that much spectacular in terms of blues or purples. And most of the green items are probably going to be trash as well. But it will be lucrative trash. So, you still pick it up. You still take it out. But for now, though, I'm going to thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again next time on the journey to Homestead. Bye-bye.